Hello, we are now in unit three of week three. In this unit, we are going to be looking at matching learning outcomes with learning activities. How are you going to match the learning activities with the learning outcome? And what is the learning outcome for this unit? In this unit, by the end of it, you will be able to select appropriate online learning activities that will help in achieving stated learning outcomes. Now, matching learning activities with learning outcomes, what do you need to do? And when you want to match your learning activity with learning outcome, you need to have a table of specification or what we call the lesson plan. So before you get to the lesson plan or table of specification, the first thing you need to do is to present the course information. We need to know the course that you are working in. Whether you're going to uh, work with course A or course B, in this regard, you could mention the course title, state the course title, and the course uh, code. Then you go further to let us know the audience that you want to attend to, the timing that is given to it, that is the length of time for that particular course, then the workload that is being expected, the hours of study that is being expected for the course. Then you still go further to let us know the topics that are going to be involved. Because for that particular course, if you remember in the last video, we have this course where we were talking about the course objective, how the course objective can help you break down your course curriculum or the content you want to deliver in your course into various uh, modes. And in the various modes, that will be the chunking. So when that you have achieved that, then it will now be time for you to come up and prepare the lesson plan or the table of specification, where you will now have to identify the activities that will help you achieve the stated learning outcomes. So what do you need to do before you can get to selecting the activities? First, you must study the stated learning outcomes and look at the key content that is going with the stated learning outcomes. Then you now review it to think of the best activities that you can come up with that will help you meet with the stated learning outcomes. In this case, you go into brainstorming. You think of all possible activities that you would think that the students will be involved in and that will help them achieve that stated learning outcome. After you have brainstormed on all the activities, now pick the best that suit it most and you now put it there and identify the best pedagogy for that particular activity. Remember that in the last video, we did mention one of the videos, we did mention the types of uh, pedagogy you can use in this instance. And we came up with three. First, we talk about the transmissive, we talk about the individual active, and we talk about the collaborative active. So in this instance, you have to look at the activity then you now look at the pedagogy you're going to use to deliver that activity. When you do this, then you are on the right path of presenting the activity to the learner. Now, let us look at a lesson plan, an example of a lesson plan. Here is an example of a lesson plan. Here, let's look at what we have here. We'll have um, the module or the unit or the topic you want to attend to here. Here on the next one, you have the learning outcomes. Here we have the key content. The key content is derived from the learning outcome. You know, you've started the learning outcome. You may now have what we call subheadings. So from here, you derive it from here. Then you have the learning activities. The learning activities is what we're talking about now. You're going to derive it from the learning outcomes. Then we have the uh, pedagogical approach. Then the next one will have resources, the learning resources assessment method, the estimated time of study, and person responsible. Now, this person responsible, you bring in this at the point of design because sometimes in your course, you discover it's not only one person that is going to write it when it comes to development. So with this, you need to identify who is going to work on which part. But whereby it is only one person, then this particular column will not be necessary. Now, if you come to the first uh, the second row I have here, 
I put here under the learning outcome. This is the stem that we guide the learning outcomes you're going to have. And the stem says, by the end of this unit, you will be able to remember the learning outcome in defining exactly what the learner will be able to do at the end of the knowledge that you have presented. So here we are coming up. The first thing under the module or unit is the course information or course guide. Because the first thing in any course you need to do is to have a guide for the learner, especially if it is an online learning. Remember, we mentioned that this particular example we gave is an online course. So what are the learning outcomes? Now, for us to get the learning outcome, you have to put it there. You have three learning outcomes that have been stated here. One is to log into the course page with the given login details. Then the second one is the nav to navigate the course page. And the last one is to identify course requirements in achieving successful completion of the course. Now, what this implies that these are the activities that the learners will do. So what is going to happen is that you, the, activity, the learner has to be involved to log into the course page. They need to navigate and they need to identify the course. So they must have something they need to walk through. Then having done that, the next one is the key content. Now you want to structure the content that you're going to give to the learners. So what do you do? Based on the learning outcome you have set, now we're going to structure the content. And here, the first thing I have is course introduction. So I'm going to have a topic, a subtopic within my course called course introduction. They are going to have another one called course requirements, which means if they walk through this content, I'll be able to achieve this. Now, what will be the learning activities? The learning activities they're going to have first, because I have these things they must achieve, the learning outcomes here. And looking at the learning outcome, I have set activities that will match each learning outcome. The first one says, log into the course page with a given login details. Now, in this instance, they need to know how to even navigate, how to log in. So therefore, here I am saying, watch instructional video on how to use the platform, which means there will be an instructional video. Either I'm going to prepare it, whether I'm going to get it through an uh, an existing video, which could be OERO video that is already in existence. Fine, but what will they do to achieve this is to watch. Then another thing here, the second one said, log into the course page and fill the personal profile. This will be an activity I will not give to them to be able to achieve this. Then the last one, watch the introductory video. So right here, they have two videos they are going to watch to be able to uh, achieve this. Now I come to the next one, pedagogical approach. I need to think of the pedagogy. Why well, will I do this? That we made them achieve this, do this and achieve this uh, learning outcome. So right here, I came up with two pedagogical approach. I have transmissive and individual active. Why bringing this in? I must know what I want to use the transmissive for and what I want to use the individual active for. The transmissive here implies I'm going to prepare the video or take it from anywhere and on any existing video and I'm going to send it to them. Because I'm going to send it to them, that is transmissive. And when they receive it, what will they do? They are going to watch it. And the watching is not in a group. They are going to watch it individually. That is individual active. So this completes this section. Now, having done that, I now have to go into the main thing. And I came up, I have my Moodle 1. Remember, I'm making reference to my course information because in the course information i've already explained there broken down the topics that i'm going to treat so here the module one is basic concept in statistics for educational manager and what will i look at first in module one right i'm picking unit two here this is unit two of module one and the unit two of module one says types of educational data now what are the objectives that i want to achieve in this particular unit of module one. First is to choose educational data for specific educational purpose in educational management. Then secondly is to evaluate educational data for educational planning of different levels of education towards quality achievement. These are the outcome that I want to achieve. 
These are the outcomes that the learner must be able to do after they have gone through this course. So they must be able to do this. They will achieve this. So right now, what are the key contents that I will derive? Because I'm going to prepare something for them either to read or to watch, or I'm going to get an OER materials. How am I going to get? So there must be something that will lead me on what I'm going to get. So in this instance, the first thing here, data requirement in educational planning. That is my first subtopic now, content I'm bringing up. So I'm going to work on data requirement in educational planning. Does it fit into this? Yes, because here, remember, I have just mentioned here, choose educational data for specific educational purpose and educational management. So if I have this topic, it will help me treat this. Then the second one is evaluation of educational uh, education data. So it will equally fit into this. Now, the next thing now for me to do is to discuss, think about the activities. Now, how, what type of activities will the students do? I'm going to give to them that we enable them achieve this set learning outcome. First, I said they're going to read, which means I'm going to prepare tests on this, which I will give to them to read. They will watch video. Then there will be forum to uh, list the type of educational data. I'm going to create a forum discussion where they will list this according to their context, showing what they do. Then I'm going to have a group work to evaluate set of educational data. So these are the activities I'm going to give to them. It is not when you are already into the course, you start thinking of the activities. No, it's at this planning stage. Now, what method am I going to use? The pedagogy. Right here, the pedagogy I want to use is transmissive, individual active, collaborative active. I'm putting the three together. There are times you use only one. There are times you use the three together, two together. It depends on what you want to achieve. Now, if I look at this, Transmissive, I'm going to get a video, I'm going to get tests, I'm going to send to them. Transmissive. Now, individual active, it, when they receive the video or test, they are going to listen to it at individual level, at their pace, at their own time. Now, I have collaborative active. Why collaborate? Because I have a group work here. Because I'm going to give them a group work where they will work as a team. That will be collaborative. So this working as a team, it now depends on you, what you want to really achieve there. You see that you give it to them to as an assignment, let them work as a team and come and do presentation, or you can now build it in. Maybe if you're going to have a live class, you let them work as a group and now come in and do their presentation. So this is the way it goes when you are thinking of getting the activities. And while thinking of all this, remember, if you have the mind of going using OER, then while you are coming up with these activities, be thinking also OER. Oh, if I cannot develop this, is this something that I can find somewhere? You start thinking about it. Now, let us look at uh, the end, which is the conclusion. Now, let's take a takeaway is that matching learning activities to learning outcome is procedural. You think of possible activities that could meet the learning outcome and choose the best fit. Also, you need to consider the pedagogy that will be best fit for the activities. So with this, we have come to the end of this unit. And I want you to begin work on your assignments so that you will be able to progress more. So I say thank you for listening.